Hello everyone, and welcome to Insight. I'm your host and this is Insight coming to you on GBS TV. Uh, tonight we are privileged to have a tribe in studio. Yes, the tribe bikers. And tonight we're going to discuss and get to know how well to avoid bullies on the road if you are a motorcycle rider. Welcome guys. Thank you. Yet first to introduce them on my immediate uh, left is ta 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 Asif Tabji, yes. as Isaac Ojuag and uh, Mohamed Kat eh? Kartar. Yeah, your name is difficult to pronounce. Now, guys, let me first get from you, uh, Asif. Uh, as a rider in Kenya, it's not very easy. I, that I know. Yes. And I'm very sure the rest of, uh, of you will, will, will uh, I mean, uh, agree with me because of one reason or the other. And most of it is because we have very rough drivers on our roads. How best can a rider avoid that bullying on our roads? Um, I think uh, once you're on the road as a rider, it's, it's uh, the first thing that you want to do is make yourself as visible as possible. Mm. Uh, have your normal protective gear, your reflective jackets, etc. Mm. And uh, try and make yourself as conspicuous as possible on the road. Mm. Uh, other than that, I think it's, it's also very important that you understand the psyche of most uh, drivers uh, on the road mm. and uh, realize that motorists do not see you. Mm. So when you're going, you, see, uh, you have to be twice as alert as when you're sitting in a car. Mm. I think that, the, that basically is very, very important mm. uh, so that you don't get uh, unnecessarily hassled on the road either. You know, it's, mm. it's quite important. Is that the reason as why well, Isaac, I want you to respond to this, is that why you came t together as tribe bikers? Yeah, it is. To well, avoid, to avoid uh, bullies on the roads? Yeah, it is true. We are quite conspicuous when we are as a team. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so that is why we normally ride together whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Of course, it is not always possible mm -hmm. to call the entire tribe. How often do you ride together? At least once a week. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, a week yeah. to or from home or for leisure? Uh, it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends. When you want to go somewhere, you just uh, we have a, a group on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. so we keep updating. So mm -hmm. most of us, we know where one is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can just uh, call friends who are going the same direction. You go together. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it is not always possible mm -hmm. to get the entire team mm -hmm. to move together because mm -hmm. we all have different uh, businesses here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever it is possible, you, you get your friends, you move together as a team. Yeah. And I'm very sure, Moha, that this group arti uh, you know, articulates for you wanting to be very safe on the roads. And you have been you know, in close contact with Matato drivers. Yeah. How do you best relate with them to make sure that once they see riders like yourself on the roads, they give them the respect that they deserve? You know, the most important thing, you have to have discipline first on the road because if you don't have discipline mm -hmm. when you're riding, mm -hmm. people will not respect you. Mm -hmm. Because you can see some other riders, they are, like, they are very rough on the roads. Mm -hmm. But the first thing you have to know, you have to, you have to be very, very disciplined. Anytime you are riding, you have to have your right calculation mm -hmm. about where you're riding, how you're passing. Mm -hmm. And normally I usually put my lights on mm -hmm. so that any driver in front of me Maybe if he wants to overtake, he can see me through the side mirror so he can be alert there's someone. And I usually hoot while I'm overtaking or passing in the middle of cars. So the most important thing is discipline and the know-how, mm -hmm. how to ride. You mm -hmm. just don't put yourself on a bike and you just ride. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very cautious, disciplined, and very... You have to have a mindset which is more than the other people, mm -hmm. the drivers and the other motorists, Matatu drivers. Because Matatu drivers, they don't ever look. Mm -hmm. They just overtake, they stop anywhere. So the most important thing, you should have distance, keep your distance away from them, mm -hmm. and know, you have to know how they do, they move and where the stages are so that you can avoid accidents and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Isaac, yes, yes. he's talking about discipline amongst riders. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's many people who say that bikers are for bad boys. Do, do you really have utmost discipline on the roads as a group? Yes, we do, and contrary to their beliefs, mm. uh, uh, bikes is not for bad boys, mm. as you put it. Mm. Like all of us, we work, we are respected in our various fields. Mm -hmm. And it is just a means of transport that we chose. Yes. One, because it is fast, mm -hmm. it is economical, mm -hmm. and several other reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't associ associate it with a, a bad boy mentality. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is just a means of transport, and you choose to have discipline, like my brother said. Mm -hmm. yeah, when you're disciplined enough, it will serve you well. Some of us have been riding, like for myself, for 12 years. Okay. Yeah, so 
I, I am, I'm quite disciplined, I can say. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, 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 Asif. Yes. Uh, as a group, how well do you engage your members on you know, traffic rules and whatever? Because not every other rider knows about what they are, how they are supposed to behave on the road. Maybe today you have a new bike, a new biker in your group. How well do you, you know, get sit, they, um, sit down, get to know this, what you are, how you're supposed to behave on the roads, so that they avoid these unnecessary accidents on the roads? Um, I think what has happened over the last couple of uh, weeks, uh, whenever we've had a new rider coming in, mm -hmm. is uh, there's always this communication channel open through uh, WhatsApp, etc. Yes. And there's a lot of people who come in with their input and say, you know, this is what you should be doing on the road, what kind of care you should be getting, uh, how you should be riding on the road, what to do, what not to do, which roads to avoid, what are the black spots uh, when you're on the road. Mm -hmm. and. I think what is very, very important that we stress is when you get on to your motorcycle, mm -hmm. what frame of mind should you be in? When Moha talks about discipline, I think he is also very much pinpointing the fact that your frame of mind, when you get on the bike, ride and get off, should be don't think about the other things that are there. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about your business, you're not thinking about that phone call you need to make urgently, etc. Get on the bike, concentrate on the riding, look around you, see what needs to be done, get from your point A to B, and then, th then start all your other work that is there. So that is important. And I think we try and educate uh, new riders along those lines as well. Yes. yes. Our infrastructure, that's the roads. Yes. Are they conscious of riders like yourselves? Uh, to a large extent, I don't think so. Hmm. The, personally, I think... Uh, uh, it, it, it is not uh, very conducive to motorcyclists as such because uh, in addition to what Isaac said is uh, motorists will go left, right and centre without looking mm. and uh, you know that we don't have uh, special lanes for motorcycles or those sort of things either so you're using the same road as your small car, as your big car, as your bus, everything and as your large trucks as well mm. so it is not exactly conducive but you've got to manage with what you have so mm. I think that that's about it. Mm. Isaac, tribes do many things together. As tribe True. bikers, what other things do you do together apart from riding? We do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, but riding is involved definitely. Yes. In order to get to wherever, like uh, once in a while we can visit children's home. Ah. Yeah, we can do community service okay. generally. Yeah. Okay. So we can agree on something to do together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we even. Uh, Eat nyamachomas together. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go back to the yeah. issue of uh, community work. Community service. Did yes. this come as just being mayor riders, or was this an idea that now gave birth to riders, or what gave birth to what? Is it the community service that came first, or riders came first? It, of course, riders came first. Okay. Then we thought of what else can we do, yeah, yeah that will have impact in the society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we cannot just meet and ride every time. Yes. Yeah, you have to come up with ways that the society will recognize that these guys are here and they do one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that is just one way of giving back to the society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Kartar. Uh, when riders see you uh, doing your, your thing on the, ro on the roads, they would feel, uh, I would want such a bike. What's the difference between the, the bikes that you guys ride and the no more border border bikes? Okay, ours are a bit different because of the CC and the Max. Mm. Because like our friend Asif has a Honda, we have Apache, mm. me and uh, Isaac. Mm. You see, the other border borders, you know, most of them, they are China. Mm. But we don't consider about which, what kind of bikes people ride. Mm. We look as a team of riders, whatever. Mm. Because me and Isaac, we started this group because there are other groups for bikers. But the thing is, them, those groups, they look of at what kind of r bike you're riding, mm -hmm. so you can join them. But us, we decided any kind of bike. Because if I come with a magician, you will, will, you jo will I join? You'll join. You'll join. Yes. Provided and I ride with you. Or yeah. You yes. You provided you have one agenda mm -hmm. to be as a one thing. Mm -hmm. You see, like we don't look at the tribe mm -hmm. or the ethnic background you have. We only look at one thing: mm -hmm. you're riding. You see, you have a bike, you join us. And what you can do good to the society. Yeah. Because it's not all about just riding. Yeah. It's, all, it's all about empowering anything. Like me, I'm a graphic designer. Mm. He's a producer. Yes. He has a business. Yes. So we can all co coexist together. Because if someone, somebody 
so somebody's bike is has an accident, I can repair it. Mm. You see, so I, I can make something out of my fellow riders mm. and even the society. Mm. Society, you see. Mm. So it's not all about just what kind of bike you have, what mm. you can. If you have a small bike or a China bike, you won't ride. No, mm. provided you have a bike mm. and you are someone who has discipline. That's that is what I believe. Mm. Discipline mm. always comes first before anything. Mm. You see, mm-hmm. that's all I can say. Uh, Isaac, when I join your group, yeah, yeah. what privileges do I enjoy as a rider? Do, will I, in times of accident, for example, will yeah. you come out and be, or some of my weaknesses or, or that I have the best knowledge on how to act on the roads? Yes. Or what other benefits do I enjoy as a rider? Actually, there are quite a number of benefits. That being one of them, we are normally there for each other, mm-hmm. it, and it has happened uh, that several of us have had accidents, it happens. Yes. The crazy roads, like we said. Mm-hmm. So we are normally there to support one another in whichever way possible, even financially, mm-hmm. to assist a friend to repair their bikes. Um, if there is medical contribution that needs to be uh, done, mm-hmm. okay, that is just one way. Another, we, t- we train, like uh, my brother has said, we train our new members on how to be safe on the road. Yeah, so you can ride even for 10 years, but there are things you've not been aware of mm. that can assist you to be yeah. safer on the road. Mm. So once you join the group, they, 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 there are a lot of benefits. Mm. Yeah, so we can train you on several things. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, John, yes, just to add to what Isaac uh, has, has put uh, mm. down, mm. Uh, an inherent benefit of being in the group also is a lot of people have... Uh, different riding experiences and number of years they've been riding. Mm-hmm. I for one don't consider myself a very uh, experienced rider. I think I still have a lot more to learn. Mm-hmm. And therefore by by being in the group you learn a few new things from uh, Moha, from Isaac and all the other members who are there. And I think that is what is mm-hmm. uh, helping us you know, uh, grow as a group as well and grow as bikers mm-hmm. uh, over, over, over the, the, the days. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I presume that many young riders that join your group mm-hmm. are young men and maybe women mm-hmm. and most of them you will find that they come to the group or they want to join your group because they want to drive as crazy as they can at very high speeds mm-hmm. how do you contain them because you see as young men and women they would want to you know overdo everybody else how do you try to contain them when they come with such kind of mentality um i i would say that okay number one uh, I think the group doesn't have too many of the younger riders, mm. uh, to be very honest. I think most of us over yeah. here are are fairly uh, uh, yes. into the late 20s and 30s mm. uh, as we speak. Mm. As far as controlling the riders is concerned, I think when you ride as a group, it is important that you know the person who's leading the group controls the pace and controls the manner in which the riding uh, happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, when you see somebody coming in without a helmet or that, you, there's an immediate you know, uh, exclamation of what are you doing, you know, uh, why are you not taking care of yourself. Yeah. So that, that uh, group kind of p- uh, pressure uh, tends to you know, have its effect and, and put people in line. Mm-hmm. I think that is what, what generally happens, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, we have seen so many road accidents that are caused by motorcycles, regardless of what type they are, what makes mm-hmm. they are. And there are so many nowadays. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going wrong? Apart from bullying on the roads, what other things are uh, attributing to these accidents? There are a lot of factors. Number one, condition of the bikes. Mm. You see, it's a personal thing. As much as we are a team, we are a group, mm. you, you take care of your own bike. Yes. So you, there are people who don't do service to their bikes at all. So like in a case of emergency, they are not able to brake mm-hmm. soon enough. Yes. Okay, number two, there is bullying, like you said, it on the road, which is beyond our control. Mm. Uh, that depends on the other road user as well. Mm. You could be on your on your path, on your line, mm. but the other guy decides to change line without notice. Mm. Yeah. Then basically, I think uh, motorists in Kenya, especially drivers, those who drive cars, uh, because the border border guys have been so rough on the roads, so the mentality. Mm. that these people are rough. So even they, they don't care. As long as you're riding, they don't give you priority. Yes. Yeah. So that is why they, they, they cause so many accidents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, the many accidents are not between a, 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 motor, a, cycli- I mean a, a rider and another rider. Mm-hmm. Normally, it involves a car or a truck or something. Yes. Yeah, because they have not come to respect us. Yeah, that is why we are even coming up with this team so that we can create awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for them to know that 
riders are not all about being crazy on the road. We are even we, we, we are even organizing training for the border border riders themselves, mm. so that they can know how to ride uh, pr properly with discipline. And, mm. Yeah, yeah. So that you can get to be noticed and recognized mm. by other drivers. Yes. Yeah. Now, Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, recently, I saw a contest in Kiambu where they are inviting bikers to come and participate in that. You know, it's for more of an amateur ride yeah. co competition. Do you, as a group, as tribe bikers, do you want to participate in it, or have you been participating, or do you want to have such contest to be elevated to a, at a professional level and participate? Okay, for the past like few weeks, mm. where the uh, the competition has been, mm. we have not attended mm. because we had our own trips. Uh, we had to go. Mm. You see, but me and Isaac, we were planning to make our own. A competition for the mm. normal bikes you see mm. to see how much experience you have mm. the safety and the know-how of how you can ride mm. because this this uh, competitions are for more bigger more powerful bikes mm. and you see it's like they are a bit like choosy on who are competing and all that you see because they are looking at the what kind of bikes you are riding oh. but us oh. we oh. want to bring a competition mm -hmm. where you can just take a platform you put guys mm -hmm four or five guys like a lap, mm -hmm. you see the time, because you know, the bikes can be the same CC, yes. but the experience. experience of the rider yeah. on how you ride. Yeah. But the competitions, they, they have been inviting us, like there's another one which is coming soon, mm -hmm. but we have not yet decided as a group mm -hmm. if you're going to go. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to sit down and decide because we have our own plans, mm -hmm. because we have to, you know, we cannot depend on other groups. We have to depend on first our group, then we decide if we'll go there or we'll have something else to be done. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Asif, I've heard all of you talk about the group, the group, the group, and that's why you are here as a tribe. Yes. W apart from being a rider, what else do I need to join the tribe by this? Um, I think uh, as part of this group, what, what has happened is, uh, like Isaac said, it, it, it started off uh, by you being a biker and the group being formed. Mm. So I think that would be uh, a bit of a prerequisite. Yes. Otherwise, uh, it, it would not make sense just to hang around in the group. But mm. uh, other than that, I think the group has, has evolved into now you developing a personal friendship with, with uh, your fellow bikers. Mm -hmm. And that has also led to business opportunities as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the sense that if I am in an industry where I need something, I will first turn to my group people and see if there's somebody within the group who can assist, who can uh, do that sort of business first. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, take it up from there. So it, it's, been, uh, it's been an all-inclusive kind of thing. You know, It's been more of a, uh, a whole uh, integrated thing over there. Mm -hmm has been good, you know, so. Yeah. I, I saw, I was watching on YouTube, a group of riders who have formed a church. They even have a pastor. Yes. Before they go out riding, they have to go for mass yeah. to say a prayer so yes. that they can ride. Is riding bikes that dangerous that you have to think about, you know, how to avoid accidents? I think... Even to an extent of going to church and so <laughs> I think it's, it's not so much uh, that it's that dangerous. I think it's just... Uh, uh, being a bit cautious and careful. Yes. Uh, there's no doubt when you sit on that motorcycle, mm. uh, it, there is a little element of danger that is always there. Yes. Uh, so with, without a doubt. So it doesn't harm for you to at least say a prayer before you get uh, get out onto the road. Mm. Uh, I think it's just uh, so much of uh, looking after yourself over there. It's not uh, uh, that it's that dangerous either. Mm. Uh, as long as you ride properly, you wear the right kind of uh, gear, etc., and you're uh, doing reasonable speeds on the road, I think you're safe enough over there. Mm. Yes. No, then, again, then again, it depends mm. on where the group was formed. Mm. Yeah, it could have been just a, a group of church members yeah. from one church mm. yeah, that saw that they had something in common and decided to form mm. to form the group. Other is like in you know, tribe bikers. We have se uh, people from several religions, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, like as you said, it's not that dangerous. Uh, even uh, 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 driving mm -hmm. is dangerous once you're behind the wheels. Mm 
Yes. It's dangerous. As long as you own anything that uh, has engine, yes. it is dangerous. Yes. And, and the yes. most important thing, in everything in this lifetime, God has to be fast. Even yeah. when you're eating, you have to pray. Mm-hmm. And eating is not dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, anything you do, you have to put <laughs> God first. God first yeah. Then everything uh, next. Uh, uh, the, the attire you put on when you're riding, yeah. uh, you look quite uh, interesting in your attire. But yeah. people would want to know, why do you have to dress like this when you're riding a bike? Of course, you, you are the board of your, of your motorcycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you fall, you are the first to hit the, the ground. Yeah. But then how much does it cost to be well you know, covered as a rider? Okay, it, it, it's a bit expensive, mm-hmm. but it's better than not having it. Because like me, myself, mm-hmm. I've already got a shoulder in, injury. Mm-hmm. Because I fell, and that time I didn't have a padded jacket. Mm-hmm. And another friend of mine, broke his knee because mm. he didn't have his mm. knee guards. Mm. So it's like a precaution. Mm. It's, it's not that you're going to fall every day, mm. but it's good to be safe than sorry. Yeah. Yes. You see? And sometimes the gear, they're not that cheap and not that expensive mm. because there are different places where you can get. Like me, I get my jackets from Kikomba mm. and they're not that expensive. Like maybe if you buy from a shop where they import them mm. new. Mm. You see, you have to look at your... Mm. How you how much you want to spend because like they are full leather gear mm. they they can even cost up to fifty thousand mm. their boots like the ones Isaac has mm. they are almost like ten to fifteen thousand and there are others which are up to even fifty thousand mm. as if can tell you mm. because he imports those things okay. even helmets mm-hmm. as if is the one who is selling us all the group helmets okay. yeah. their helmets from five thousand mm. to thirty thousand it mm. depends with the quality and the design of it, you see. Mm. So it depends on w- what you want to do or what you want to spend. Mm. Because if you you have enough money, go buy it from the shop. It's new. Like the full suit is like thirty, forty thousand. 40,000. The boots are like 22,000. See, that's true, Isaac. Yeah, They're like 22,000. Mm. They're gloves from 1,000 to 5,000. It depends mm. with yeah. the quality yeah. and the, where you get it from. Mm. And then uh, uh, what, what I know is that you cannot miss. Mm. You can. There is no excuse that it is too expensive. You cannot have this mm. uh, gear. Mm. Yeah, because like uh, Moha put it, depending on your pocket, but you cannot miss. Even with 2,000, I can get good uh, gloves. Yeah. With 20,000, I can do, do the same. Mm-hmm. So there is no excuse why people should go riding outside mm-hmm. with no gear. Mm-hmm. Because like you put it, mm-hmm. you are the body. Yeah. yeah, you are the body. So should anything happen, you get in in contact. Mm. Yeah, so it is good when you're prepared. You've seen these guys on super bikes. They fall and uh, they, they, yeah, they are over, right. at over 140. Yes. But they just get up, look for their bikes, and yeah, right because they are geared up for the ride. Mm. Yeah, so it is good to get the right gear. But if yeah. you fall once. You know the most impo- the, yeah. the, the importance of the yeah. Gear. If you fall without the Once. gear, <laughs> so it is just good to. So have and the helmet them. is the most important thing yeah. because the helmet. If you don't have the helmet, you know you can just have serious injuries, your spinal cord mm. being paralyzed and all this. Yeah. And like me, you know I don't have hair, mm. so it is. Much <laughs> 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 is, it, is Kenya ready to be a riding nation? Do you want the tribe to be? A group that is made up of let's say 10,000 riders. Yes, yeah. I, I would say uh, motorcycles is an idea whose time has just come to Kenya. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's something that is going to go in a big way. Mm. Uh, and uh, given that it is going in a big way, I think now is a, is a very crucial time for uh, bike groups. Uh, anybody who's involved with motorcycling in any way whatsoever to stress upon the the need for safety regulations, to stress upon the need for how to uh, ride on the road, what kind of uh, discipline you require, educating generally people on what is important as far as motorcyclists and motorcycle riding is concerned. Mm. So yes, as far as uh, are we ready to become a motorcycling nation, I think it's already happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's just a question of how quickly we catch up with the basics of motorcycling, and that is very important, Mm -hmm. especially with your border borders etc you know um, even on the road we must all make that personal effort uh, you go on the road I see a lot of these border borders going without their helmets and you know I make it a point to stop over and say listen can you put on your helmet as the least you can do uh, if not at least for the other gear and uh, and, and uh, 
we must all stress this on the road. Let's all make an individual effort at educating everybody else out there as well, mm. and not just the rider, but also the passenger who's uh, the pillion rider who's on on that motorcycle must do the same as well. Yes. It is key, key, key over here. Mm. Yes, Isaac, Kenya has a disease or a problem or a cancer of overloading in the traffic uh, mm. industry. As riders, what is your message to, you know, especially border border riders, because they are the ones who have this constant, you know, urge to have as many people on their bikes as yeah. possible. Now, what I can say, money is never enough. Mm. Even if your bike could carry four at a go, yeah. safety first. Yeah. So just obey the law, carry one passenger as the law says, and we'll be safe. Yeah. As if on the same because I know you deal with other drivers Moha. and maybe you uh, yeah or Moha. Mm -hmm. and maybe you engage in chats about how you can carry as many people as you can because they too want are uh, very fond of doing that no, you know because the most important thing you just have to look sometimes you have to obey the rules mm -hmm. if you obey the rules everything will be easy the border borders they carry one passenger as it permits mm -hmm. and they ride safely and slow because even if let's say like us we have bikes even if you go at speed of 40, you'll obviously reach before a car, no matter what cost. Because even if this, your speed is slow, provided you will not stop. Mm. So even the border borders, provided they just look at the speed, the limit they have, the safety they, they put, it's easy. Mm. So we reduce more accidents. And for the drivers, what they can do is just respect all the... Yeah. A anyone on the road, even the pedestrians, mm -hmm. because maybe someone is crossing on the zebra crossing matatus, they don't stop. They're like they're hooting, it's like they are right mm -hmm. to pass. So people just to obey the rules, and everything will be just easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've had the rules, the rules, the rules, the yeah. traffic rules, and what have you. How uh, I mean, strict is motorcycle rules in Kenya, Isaac? They are strict, mm -hmm. they are strict, yeah. Yeah, because even last night I was stopped twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meaning those uh, the police uh, they are doing their work. Yes. Yeah, so it is now up to us because uh, I can decide not to follow that route once I know there's a stopover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is up to us as riders also, uh, basically to just make an effort to follow the rules, yes. uh, whether the police is there or not. Like now things like wearing helmet. Yeah. It is for your own safety. Mm. You are not doing it for the police. Is it punishable by law if you don't wear one? It, it is. It is punishable by law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the reflectors, even the current laws are even more strict, and the the fines you pay mm. now is crazy. But it is for our own good anyway. Mm. Yeah, yeah. As if I also want to get to to know, not necessarily me, but maybe the viewer who wants to be a biker tomorrow. Uh, when I uh, uh, you know flout traffic rules as a biker, what punishments are, am I liable to? And most especially on, do I need a, a road license if I'm a bike? Uh, yes, you need to have a valid driving license. Mm -hmm. That's important. So I think the first and most important thing when you are a new rider is to learn how to ride first mm -hmm. and ride correctly. There yes. are uh, there are driving uh, schools who give riding lessons, and there are individuals who also offer riding classes, mm -hmm. which go beyond just moving the motorcycle, but teaching you the basics of motorcycling from cornering to braking to everything. Mm -hmm. That is, I think it's imperative that all of us make that extra effort mm -hmm. at learning that. Mm -hmm. Once you've gone beyond that, yes, if you break uh, if you break the rules as you as you as you asked, uh, you are liable to get caught over there. Uh, as it stands right now, from what I've seen on the road, uh, the there is less stress on motorcycle riders. And I think it has to be uh, more of a question of self-discipline rather than actually you know, uh, getting the, somebody to come and catch you on the road. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I think we all need to practice a lot, a lot of self-discipline in order to obey the traffic laws. Mm -hmm. And know that, look, it's not really about uh, uh, fearing that fine of 10, 20,000 shillings, mm -hmm. but it's knowing that if you break the traffic light, you could get hit you could get run over and you could die and that affects your family mm -hmm. so that is what is important over here I think. Isaac, recently I saw a biker who was hit by a, mo by a motorist mm -hmm. and then his bike caught fire instantly what is the likely cause of that? probably he had full tank <laughs> yeah probably basically with uh, the fuel yeah, or probably uh, an electrical uh, spark. Uh, uh, spark during the 
Mm. Yeah, the crash. incident yeah, during mm. the crash. Yeah. Mm. So something could have sparked off, but it rarely happens anyway. Mm. People get accidents, people roll, but it rarely happens. But in instances where an electric cable probably was, yeah, mm. it, it, it could happen. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, mechanic, the mechanic can tell us more on yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. technical matters. Yeah, because you know, sometimes when the motorbike crash, mm -hmm. maybe the friction on the road and there's some petrol maybe leaking, that can uh, spark the flame mm -hmm. to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, get, I would want you to take on this. How, what are the benefits of being a rider? What do you enjoy? Uh, apart from, you know, you get to a certain place faster than everybody else. What other benefits are there as a Okay, for me, what I can say, mm -hmm. it's an experience I've never experienced with anything. Mm -hmm. The wind, the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Yani, it's like something no one can explain. Mm -hmm. It's just something out of this world. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of things in my life. I've experienced a lot of things. But this one is something, even I told, I've been telling Isaac, it's something mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain. It's mm -hmm. just we're out of this world. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people say the adrenaline rush mm -hmm. when you go fast, and or okay, what I can say, I cannot explain the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's just too good. <laughs> yes, Isaac, yeah. I see you have some. No, about another benefit is definitely economical. Mm -hmm. It is more economical. Like now, where, where you're using 500 shillings, I use like a hundred or less mm -hmm. on my motorbike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then definitely I get there faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. W when then, it rains, uh -huh. what advantage do you have for getting uh, to uh, over someone who has a car? Uh, we have uh, the, the right gear for that. Mm -hmm. Everything has advantage and disadvantage. Yes. Now for the riding uh, side, it is the weather elements. Yeah. It does not favor us, but we have countered that by buying the right gear. Mm -hmm. Like when I came in, it was raining in the morning, yes. but I was wearing waterproof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I can ride. There was one time I was riding to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And it rained on me seriously. But you can ride I, that far from Nairobi to Kisumu. Yeah, we ride all over the place. Mm. Like myself, I, I think every corner of this country, mm. whether it's near Ururu, mm. Loi Tok Tok, I've been there with my motorbike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as long as you have the right gear, even when I'm not wearing them, they're in my bag somewhere. Okay. So should it rain, I just put on the mm. uh, waterproof mm. uh, gear and I'm good to go. High-speed high motorcycles are safe. Mm. Yes. Is it, is it permitted to have, you know, passenger on them or just yourself? Uh, I think both majority of motorcycles you can carry a, a passenger uh, on it. Uh, uh, there is no law against carrying them, but there are laws in terms of speed limits which apply to motorcycles as much as in as much as they do to cars. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's about uh, how it works out. But the, pa carrying passengers is not an issue. Mm -hmm. I think that that's allowed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I want to become a tri tri biker tomorrow. What, how much money do I need to pay to join you? Just come with a bike. Mm. As of now, there's no there's yeah. no money to be paid. We, yeah. we, we just ride as a group. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no monthly contribution or anything as such. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just a group of friends who've come together and uh, like-minded people and we, 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 we ride together. That's it. There's no need for money. There's no money issues over here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as Mohan said, I think the first thing that he put it was there is no question of who does what. Mm -hmm. If you have a motorcycle, you're eligible, come. That's mm -hmm. about it. Yes. Do you have a group leader, a chairman, a secretary or anything? <laughs> who tweets your <laughs> tweets? Or who, 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 who? Uh, okay, I'm the administrator okay. for the group. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. okay. Do you have a final comment on no upcoming riders? Uh, on upcoming riders, uh, 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 to join us or just to start riding? Yes. I can tell them, uh, just be safe. Mm -hmm. Riding is fun, but safety, mm -hmm. safety comes That's first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, probably not to the riders now, to the drivers. Just know that we are here uh, and we share the road. Mm -hmm. So just uh, be uh, more Cautious to us also, mm. courtesy on the road, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Mm. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, viewer, that has been Insight coming to you on GBS TV. And if you don't have a tribe, look for a bike and you'll get one. Have a good night.